Hello, I'm Atsuba Josh, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we just bless and honor your name. You are so good. I enjoy these moments with you, Lord. Bringing your truth to everyone that is listening. So, Lord, I ask that you bring forth your wisdom and your knowledge today to every hearer. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can we make the request for our delivery? Join me, join me, praise God. I feel the presence of God. Join me now, say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, I pray during this um, teachings or series, we get to talk about angels and how they function. Say, a lot of people don't know. Because as we're praying right now, I just heard in my spirit that those who say these things with you are being marked by angels. You see, as you're listening, now this thing, this whatever device you're using, your TV, maybe you have a smart TV, your, your phone, your, your tabs, whatever, your computer, this voice is coming out. And as you're hearing, the angels are hearing, okay? Why God does things like this? Some of you don't understand. Why would I come up on this broadcast every day and say, say after me or say with me? And when I say, say with me, please say it. As we're praying, I just heard in my spirit. Now, when I say I heard in my spirit, sometimes you say the Lord said to me, you know, and sometimes you say, uh, I, I just heard. Now, it's not like we cannot always say the Lord said to me because sometimes we're not even sure who's speaking. When it comes instantly and then you, you just want to let it out. Now, when it takes a while, I can tell you exactly who spoke, okay? But now, the, because sometimes the Lord speaks and sometimes angels speak. And because the voice is alike, it's the characteristics that tells you who's the speaker. So for this one, the reason I say I heard in my spirit, I didn't want to say who spoke, is because it might be God, it might be an angel. When I mean an angel, the angel. Okay. But what, what's important is the message than going into that. Yeah, praise God. Now, I heard in my spirit that those who say this prayer with you have been watched and marked by angels. And the instant I heard it, the picture, now that's how he does this thing. When he speaks to you, the picture comes. And you can explain it in details. So, this is, what the, this is the picture that I, that I saw. As I was saying, I demand right now Remember, the Lord commanded us to do this. Now, if you watch this broadcast and we are doing this and you're not doing it, see what happens to you. Because the Lord commanded that we do this and a specific angel was released for this purpose. Yes. Every instruction of God, every command, every assignment that God gives, he sends angels to back it up. Those angels, their job is solely for that purpose. So, as, as I'm saying it now, you are over there. The words are coming out. The words are heard. So, you're not the only one hearing what I'm sharing with you. Angels are hearing what, you're, what I'm sharing with you. Now, instructions are given. Now, you find this happen many times. A preacher is preaching. Say, stretch your hands towards the TV. I want to pray for you. And someone far away, miles away, stretches his hands to the TV. And if a pastor prays, I've, I've seen several of those testimonies on this broadcast. And then you go, I command that sickness to go. And sometimes, word of knowledge begins to come to you. How do you think that works? Angels. And, and you are far away and then you just stretch your hand and then a healing takes place. Another fellow is just this. This is stretch your hand. You're sick. This is stretch your hands towards your screen. You just sit there and they say, Amen. 
Amen. And nothing happens. Why? Now, what's the difference? Because you stretch your hands according to the instruction that was given. The angel that is with you knows that you are connecting to this instruction. And so what happens? They open that portal. They open that atmosphere for a miracle to take place. Yeah. Why am I sharing this? I'm not gaining anything from you saying with me. But, but I just saw that and I thought to share it with you. So when we pray this prayer, say, say with me, Father, I demand right now. And then you open your mouth. Don't say it in your heart. You open your mouth and you are saying it. We're saying it together. Guess what happens? The angels with you mark you and say, Ah, oh, you are expecting daily bread from the Lord. Now, when you are consistent with this and consistent with this, and what happens to you? Two things. Your angels begin to adjust to this reality that you are expecting daily bread. And, and guess what? If they don't have the capacity to provide it, a call is made from heaven because of your consistency. So some of you say, I've said it for two days. I've said it for one week. I, I've not seen anything. Be consistent. It was the consistent of Daniel's prayer for 21 days that pulled Michael from heaven, even though an angel has been sent to him before now. His consistency made heaven realize that uh, what he's asking for has not reached him, even though it has been answered. So they needed to send another angel to go and confirm what is going on. And that's how heaven operates. I pray you understand this thing. So when I say, say after me, not just me. When a preacher is preaching and he says, say after me, or he gives an instruction. Why do we give those instructions? Because we want to take a count, not we personally taking counts now. As you obey those instructions, we say, stretch your hands, stretch your hands. We say, do this, do this. You, your angels are here. And when they see you respond, they know what to do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. So, I was talking to you yesterday about the word of God. And I said, the word of God appears. He shows up as a man. Okay? Yes, he does. And... Every appearance of God that you see, some people don't believe God ever appeared. Some people preach and say, oh, it's not God. It's, it's, it's mistaken. It's God. I'm not the father. Like I said, they all hinge their thoughts on the statement John made. No man has seen God at any time. So they say, all those appearances, you can't generalize. Can you, can you be patient to learn from the word? Yeah, you don't generalize things. Even when evidences show that men have seen God, you still take a statement. Even instead of you to understand the statement in the first place. Now, I'm not sharing anything strange with you. It's the same thing that I did. Okay, Lord, sorry. John said no man has seen God at any time. There's a problem here because now there are evidences according to the scriptures or unless we don't believe the scriptures anymore. According to the scriptures, the word of God came walking in the garden in the pool of the day. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and this and this and this and that. So how come then John is saying no man has seen God at any time? Now, good question. Then the Lord shows up. Who showed up? The Holy Spirit. Jesus said it is the job of the Holy Spirit to do one thing. Guide you into all truth. So the Holy Spirit shows up. Now when I say show up, it doesn't come as a human being, Okay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, the Holy Spirit comes and then he begins to put you in truth. He begins to guide you into all truth. He says, uh -uh. you didn't understand what John said. So what did he say? Let me take you to where he was referring to. So he takes you to 
In John chapter 6, when Jesus said, not that anyone has seen the Father at any time. Now, before now, he has taught me the difference between the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? So now, all he needed to do is say, Jesus was the one that said, no man has seen, not that anyone has seen the Father. Now, that's all he needed to say. Bam! My understanding was opened. You see? Just the same with the disciples. Jesus breathed on them and their understanding was opened. And they began to understand the, the, the prophets, the law, and the Psalms. Everything began to make sense to them. That's why I say it's the, Holy, it's the job of the Holy Spirit. It is not redeemed. It is not studying. It is fellowshipping. Fellowship. Please fellowship with the Lord. Ask him all the million questions you have in your heart and be patient. Now, these things I'm sharing with you didn't come the day I asked him, Lord, I don't get oh, what, you know. He says, meditate on it day and night. So I can carry these questions for months. Yes, Lord, you've not answered this. There's still a bit of confusion. And, and sometimes it affects my teachings. I pause. I won't teach on this until I get a clear understanding of it. Then at his own time, he visits. You asked me about this question. Yes, sir. Turn your Bibles to so. And that's the amazing thing. He will take you to the Bible. <laughs> Turn your Bible to so and so. Hmm. Was someone standing with me? No. I'm hearing his voice. And then I turned to Did you see that? Now, I learned over the years. You know, like I said, sometimes he will not answer you immediately. He will answer you months, sometimes even years later. But I learned from experience that no, he answered from the very first day. Because like I said, in this particular one, you know, I had a problem with what John said. No man has seen God at any time. It looks like John is telling me a lie. Or something is wrong somewhere. So I began to ask the Lord concerning it. And then he didn't answer me like I thought. Then one day he, he comes and says, let me show you a scripture. I said, okay. So, because you didn't understand what John said. And then he took me to John chapter 6. And I just read it. Not that any man has seen the Father. Bam. That was all. I mean, I mean it was so complete that like more like oh, that's not what i did but you know how the expression like see lord i got i have gotten it. thank you thank you no, you don't need to say anything i have gotten now now before like i said it took months this, this took must have taken close to a year it took it took months but then he just showed me one scripture in respect to the question i asked him. but guess what within those months he has come and says, let me teach you about the Father. And then he taught me about the Father. This, this, this. See, see, there's a distinction here. There's a distinction here. Oh, yeah. Wow. I'm learning. He's teaching. I'm learning. But I never connected it to the question I asked him. Now, line being upon line, precept being upon precept, here a little, there a little. He's bringing you and bringing you. And one day he comes and says, that question you asked me. He said, yeah. You, you know, it's like solving mathematics. Okay? It's like solving mathematics. And a question is thrown. And then you're looking, 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 and say, hey, how can, how can you solve this? What kind of question is this? And then a good teacher or a good mathematician shows up and he said, when you look at this question, what comes to mind, first of all, you remember social equation. You remember social law. And then you apply this law here, apply this law here, apply this law here. Now, do you know, do you know, I mean, complex mathematics now. Do you know you can fill, fill a whole page and yet you have not solved that question that was asked? What are you doing? You're bringing for derivatives. You understand what I'm saying? You're bringing them for bringing them. Now, when you are done with all that, now you now say, so, to solve this problem, then the person say, I get it. You don't need to solve it. I get it. I, I didn't see it that way all this while. Now, that's how... It is with the Holy Spirit. If this is not happening in your life, I 
I, I am afraid. <laughs> I hardly say, say that, but in this context, I think it's important I say, I'm afraid you're not working with God. Yeah. Godly fear, not, not fearful fear. Godly fear. You're not working with God. I'll tell you something. I was listening to this song by uh, uh, Minister Donsi and um, Lores Oyo. Um, ah, what's the title of the song? Uh, it's a recent song a few months ago. You are worthy of my worship, worthy of... You know, there, there's, there's, a, there's a line of that song that they said, I think it was Lawrence Oyo that said, may I not lose my all. You see that statement is deep. May I never lose my all. Yeah. May, see, it's a prayer. May you never. Now, if you don't have, now that's <laughs> that's that's A W E being Oh, it is. Listen. Now, how, how, where says, may I never lose it? How do you get, it's not an imagination. It's the frequent experiences that you have of the Lord that keeps you in. Whoa. Now, when some of us have been on this for many years without thinking twice, what do you think is keeping us? Think it's the work we are doing? No. Every time he shows up, you go, whoa, wow, awesome. Uh -huh. Don't ever lose that. If you lose that, even though you're still preaching, very soon everything will become dry. Uh. But when that keeps coming and keeps coming, I mean, when I heard that, when I heard that statement, I, I, that's what I do. I meditate on phrases. I meditate. On, I don't, I don't just hear a song and I'm singing and rejoicing, shaking my head. I, I analyze the words because that's where the richness of the material is. Be it preaching, be it song, the richness is in those words. Now that's how you even tell if this thing is from God or not. Anybody can walk into the studio and start singing, Oh, Lili, la, 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 Father, I love you. Anybody can do that. But when, when, when a material is from heaven, as you listen, you will, hear, you will hear the person singing, you will hear the sound from heaven. And if you've not listened to that song, go listen to it. And, and take that line, May I never lose my all. Is a sincere prayer you need to pray. You see that all oh, is not, it's not, you can't manufacture it. It is, it is the product of his revealing himself to you. Yeah. That's your response. You go, wow. Wow. Nobody has to be there. This does not happen in church. Now, when I mean, I mean, I mean, you can be in church and, and the Spirit of God begin to open your understanding or your eyes. But I'm saying, you don't need to only go to church. To, you, this, this happens and it doesn't happen to all of us. It happens to you as an individual. This is what will keep your salvation going. You, 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 you think on Him. And you go, whoa, Lord. Wow. Just you in your room. And the Holy Spirit begins to open your eyes, open your understanding. Like, wow. Do you know what's going on? This is eternal life. And they might know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. This is that knowledge. Your eyes are being opened. Your eyes are being opened. Listen, I tell you the truth. Around you, miraculous things begin to take place. Oh, you don't understand. When you see some of us have never bothered about anything, we take no thoughts. You don't see us running from pillar to post. You, you know, some, some people tell me that, is it? You're too calm. 
You are too calm as though everything is under control. I say, yes, but everything is under control. Oh, I do my part. My part is not to be running elder skelter. You never see me worry over finances. You ne never, you never see everything around me is completely under control. I don't have to shout, but completely, you can't trap me. You can't trap me to the place of disadvantage. It is impossible. Very impossible. I don't want to tag myself a prophet. I don't like those names. I like to see myself as a believer in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because I want you to be able to relate with these things. Not because you have to be a prophet to, to understand. No, sir. You just have to believe in Jesus Christ and walk with him. And he, he will take you to places nobody will ever take you to. He will show you things, great and mighty things that you did not know. Isn't that what he said? Call upon me and I'll show you great and mighty things that you did not know. There are things. And listen, these things, these things are not taking you to heaven, taking you to realms. No, that's not. He, 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 he shows you of himself. And you see. How can you be sick? How can you lack? Because see, the more you know of him, the more angels recognize you. And the more angels recognize you, the more things are made easy for you in life. You don't have to own... Covetousness is not part of it. But in all things, you lack nothing. My time is up. Praise <laughs> God. Woo! Glory! May you come into this fellowship. May you come into this fellowship. It's a great estate. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.